So lacking of this education, this is the consequence. And one very solid example, visual example is food in canteen. So canteen, school canteen, university canteen. All these kids and, and young people when they're in the school, see how many people wasted the food given to them. And if you look at modern society, how many people are actually cultivating the virtue of um, patience towards others instead of trying to get one off, one up over another. So the basics of virtues is to let everyone to be more kind towards one another, respectful towards one another. You know, the elders who uh, require care and love will be taken care of. So these symbols help us, remind us uh, to bring out our compassions, uh, our pure mind, to cultivate a pure mind and also a, a joyful outlook of life and giving heart in our daily life and through daily practice, trade daily um, cultivations, like doing this every time. Get used to being kind, get used to being gentle, get used to being good. Otherwise, if you don't understand why they have this symbolized way of education, otherwise you will become superstitious. We just do it for the sake of doing it. We don't know why we're doing this. People will say you are superstitious. Oh, uh, bringing people into a wrong path. You know, they are not productive towards the society. Uh, what offering, what flower, water, fruit, uh, because you want to idol worship some statue made of woods or clay or gold. So those are those are just materials. Why are you doing that? Because if we don't understand what it means, it looks like that, isn't it? So now we are learning about understanding Buddhism. One of them is offering incense when we do the uh, offerings. And what is offering incense mean? It brings, it means, it has meaning. It has Everything has a meaning. And it means we are receiving the Dharma without giving any doubts. Uh, right now, the biggest, biggest problem of learning this path of enlightenment uh, what is the biggest obstacle for Buddhists? It's not the biggest obstacle. Is not the greed, hatred, ignorance. It's not about uh, attachment to the sent desires and power and fame. Those are not the biggest obstacle. Actually, the biggest obstacle is your doubt, suspicious tendency to suspicious suspect easily. For example, you chanting Amitabha, and then the follow following thoughts arise: Or oh, can did he actually mend it? Is it for real? Uh, can I truly put report in pure land? Can I truly be uh, blessed? If you don't even have a basic confidence in the teacher, how can you take in all his teachings? And how do you build up the confidence? So, learning from sages teaching uh, Buddhism and Confucius all that they all start from confidence into characters of our teacher confidence into cause and effect do good will reap good do bad will reap bad the iron law if we use doubt everything becomes like you cannot stand on anything right Oh, those those are those are the techniques used by these people to control the masses, or used by these people to uh, scare them from not doing good. So everyone should do bad. Everyone should just fall into that uh, doubt being into one another, their own family. Uh, even worse, some was thinking, okay, I only live here. I only come to this world once, right? So I can do anything I want without restraint. How can we live a happy life like that? So, returning back to understanding why we're offering incense, right? It's not to uh, make Buddha happy or make Bodhisattva happy, right? It's not to uh, give uh, fragrance to them. No. 
it's reminding ourselves. It's all about you. It's all for you. They are doing all this for yourself to understand, to learn. All right, to be confident in his teaching, to strengthen the confidence, and also be kind, be a fragrance towards people around you. All right. When you light the incense, when you smell the ar uh, the aromatic smell of incense, you must remind that everything I speak, everything I do, my character has to be as warm and as fragrance like an incense. That means being kind, you always benefit other people, always care and considerate for them. Uh, and on the other hand, I do not want to be someone who harm or everything I speak, everything I do is harm harmful or hurtful to those that. That's why we light the incense. Uh, so when you light incense, the first thing you should think about is I must guard my speech, speech my, my mouth, uh, prevent it from becoming a sword that harms you. Most of the time it's people close to you. And in the other hand, we need to Remind when we smell this in fragrance of incense, we must remind ourselves how many kindness you have received when you were born. And Buddhism categorized into four kindness to repay. First is parents, without saying, without needing to state. Second is the teachers who give you wisdom, give you ability to see. Third is your country, countries that allow you to have a society that is peaceful, to grow. And the last one is the sentient beings who provide everything you have in need in your life. And that's why we have this ceremony, offering incense. Second, offering of flower. What does flower mean? Flower means coarse, seeds. When you look at the flower, you think of the coarse. There are common conception of uh, offering flowers. Uh, you will look good, uh, or you will become beautiful in the next life, or when you go on in your life. Or most most ladies, you know, um, they heard of this um, common uh, words that you know you you uh, offer flowers. Uh, you will if you offer the Buddha the flower, uh, you will look good. Uh, you will get more uh, your look will be more dignified. Uh, but it's it's not the actual meaning, you know. It's not the ultimate meaning of it. So when you look at a lot of a uh, Sadama ceremony, a lot of uh women are giving the uh, flowers because of this understanding. But the actual meaning of offering flower uh, in depth when you look go deeper is to cultivate good cause. Why? If you look at uh, the society, there are people born in poor poverty, some people born to wealth, born to the position of high power, great power. It has all, it has everything to do with the cause. They cultivate. Some people fall into the realm of animal, to the realm of hell or hungry ghost. It's also because of the cause they cultivate in the past. So, in simpler words, remind yourself of cause means prevent yourself from creating the cause of your sufferings or bad deeds, which is the cause of suffering. Your speech, your action, your thought. So when you remind yourself through the offering of flowers, you remind yourself of your deeds, uh, your attitudes. Uh, has to be as the same as the Buddha that you offer the flower to. My cause must be the same as the Amitabha or any Buddha Bodhisattva you're offering to. That's the point. To remind ourselves in our living environment, environment, everything is also impermanent. Flower is impermanent, isn't it? It, wil it wilted very quickly. So also remind us that everything you live, everything you have, the relationship you have and all that, it will change as time goes on. This is impermanence of life, one of the facts. And uh, we do not get too attached to, to it from this understanding. And from here, this small example, we can see how 
Buddhism overcome, uh, overtakes all forms of education in the world.